Hi, thanks for joining. My name is Melissa. I'm a population health specialist with the Villages Health. Today we're going to talk about heat-related illnesses, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. So the three different types we're going to go over today, you can see on the screen. Uh, the top one in the yellow will start with heat cramps. These are actually the mildest form of heat illnesses, um, and they consist of painful muscle cramps and spasms that occur during or after intense exercise and sweating in high heat. Now in the middle, in the orange, is heat exhaustion. This one is more severe than heat cramps, and it results from a loss of water and salt in the body. It occurs in conditions of extreme heat and excessive sweating without adequate fluid and salt replacement. Heat exhaustion occurs when the body is unable to cool itself properly and, if left untreated, can progress to heat stroke, which is what you'll see at the bottom in the red. Heat stroke is the most severe form of heat illness. It occurs when the body's heat regulating system is overwhelmed by excessive heat. It is a life-threatening emergency and does require immediate medical attention. During this presentation, we're going to go over the three different types that we discussed here, uh, the symptoms as well as some treatment um, in a little bit more detail about the three. So the first one, heat cramps. Uh, like we said, they are painful involuntary muscle spasms that usually occur uh, during heavy exercise in hot environments. The spasms uh, may be more intense and more prolonged than your typical nighttime leg cramps. Fluid and electrolyte loss uh, usually contribute to heat cramps. Uh, the muscles that are usually affected are those of your calves, arms, abdominal wall, and back. Although heat cramps can actually involve any muscle group that was involved in the exercise um, in the heat. Some first aid and treatment for heat cramps. The first one you'll see here is to rest briefly and cool down. So if you feel like you're starting to get a cramp in one of your muscle groups, stop whatever you're doing and rest. Drink clear juice or an electrolyte containing sports drink. There's a lot of those out there now, different flavors. Uh, some have less calories, less sugar, a lot of options. You can also practice gentle range of motion stretching and gentle massage of the affected muscle group. Do not resume strenuous activity for several hours or even longer after your heat cramps go away. You wanna make sure that those muscle groups are completely cooled down and rested before you um, resume uh, working that muscle. Otherwise, the heat cramps could come back and they could get worse. And call your doctor if your cramps do not go away within an hour or so. So prolonged heat cramps after you do the things listed here on the treatment um, slide, you definitely want to contact the doctor. Uh, they may want to do some further evaluation and have other treatment options for you. Next one is heat exhaustion. This is the one that was in the middle in the orange color. Heat exhaustion is a condition whose symptoms may include heavy sweating and a rapid pulse or heartbeat, a result of your body overheating. This is uh, one of the three heat-related syndromes. Um, like we talked about, heat, cramp is, heat cramps are the mildest, and heat stroke is the most severe. So this one, heat exhaustion, is right in the middle. Uh, causes uh, can ex include exposure to high temperature, uh, particularly when it's combined with high humidity and strenuous physical activity. So maybe exercising, uh, could be working, maybe working in the yard. Um, but the high heat and high humidity are very common the causes of this. Um, without prompt treatment, heat exhaustion can lead to heat stroke, which is that life-threatening condition. Um, but the good news is heat exhaustion is preventable. You can see in the picture here, we have a guy that looks like he was doing some type of physical activity, maybe a um, triathlon, a, a bicycling, a marathon, something. Uh, and he's got, uh, looks like a rag on his neck. He's got some on his wrist. He's got the, the medical personnel there and a, a bottle of water trying to cool himself down. So heat exhaustion um, is quite common, actually. So it's 
very important to be aware of the symptoms and treatment so it does not progress to heat stroke. So some of the common symptoms of heat exhaustion, um, we'll go over those. Uh, they may develop suddenly or it could take some time, especially with uh, prolonged periods of exercise. So some of the signs and symptoms include cool, moist skin with goosebumps when in the heat, heavy sweating, faintness, dizziness, unusual fatigue, weak, rapid pulse, low blood pressure upon standing, muscle cramps, nausea, or headache. Now you may have one of these symptoms or you could have multiple. But again, it's very important to know the common symptoms um, if you are in the heat and humidity because if you do feel like you're starting to have any of these, it's so important um, to go and let your body cool off and, and hydrate yourself. But when should you seek medical attention? If you think you are experiencing heat exhaustion, number one, stop whatever you're doing and let your body rest. You want to move to a cooler place. Uh, if you can find an air-conditioned location, that's the best thing to do. Um, if not, if you're outside and, and there's no air-conditioned area near, find a shaded area where you can get um, some air, whether it be from a fan, someone fanning you, you fanning yourself, just a cooler place um, out of the sun. And also drink some cool water or uh, sports drinks. So you want to contact your doctor if your symptoms worsen or do not improve within one hour. If you're with someone showing the possible signs of heat exhaustion, you want to seek immediate medical attention. Um, if they become unusually confused or agitated, if they lose consciousness, or if they're unable to drink any fluids, um, you'll need immediate cooling and urgent medical condition if their core body temperature reaches 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. That's when this becomes a medical emergency. So some of the causes, aside from the hot and humid weather and strenuous activity, there are some other causes that can happen with heat exhaustion. Uh, the first one you can see here is dehydration. So this reduces your body's ability to sweat and maintain a normal temperature making sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids. If you're ill, maybe you don't feel like drinking and you just want to rest, you could very easily become dehydrated. Also, if you're outdoors, if you're working in the heat and humidity or exercising and you're not replacing all of that sweat, um, you can very easily become dehydrated as well. Uh, now, we do have a seminar that talks about dehydration. So if that's something that interests you and you'd like some more information, you can check with our Learning Center calendar and get all of the details about the upcoming um, classes that we offer. Another cause of uh, heat exhaustion can be alcohol use. This can affect your body's ability to regulate your uh, internal temperature. And the third possible cause is overdressing. So particularly in clothes that don't allow um, sweat to evaporate from your body easily. So it, it doesn't evaporate, it just kind of sits and, and your body's not able to cool itself off. So the most common cause that we see is the hot and humid weather um, mixed with the strenuous activity, but these are some possible other causes that can develop into heat exhaustion. So again, the awareness is very important. So there are some people um, that are at a higher risk uh, for developing heat exhaustion, so we'll go over those now. So people that are younger or older in age are at a higher risk. Infants and children younger than four, and adults older than 65 are at a higher risk of heat exhaustion. The body's ability to regulate its temperature is not fully developed in the young, and it could be reduced in the older adults because of certain illnesses like diabetes, uh, certain medications, and other factors. Now, some of the medications that could put you at a higher risk um, that affect your body's ability to stay hydrated and to respond appropriately to the heat could be certain blood pressure medications, certain heart medications like beta blockers and diuretics, which are those water pills. Also some uh, allergy medications like antihistamines, 
Uh, some other medications include certain tranquilizers. Also, some antipsychotic medications can put you at a higher risk for becoming, um, for developing heat exhaustion. So it's very important to make sure you're aware of what you're taking and the possible uh, side effects. This could put you at a higher risk if you're taking any of these medications. So talk to your doctor. A third risk factor is if you are obese. Carrying excessive weight can affect your body's ability to regulate its temperature, which in turn can cause your body to retain more heat. Also, sudden temperature changes. If you're not used to the heat, uh, you're more susceptible to any of the heat-related illnesses like heat cramps, heat exhaustion, or even heat stroke. So if you moved from an environment that is cooler down to Florida, for example, we have very high heat and humidity during the spring, summer, and fall. Um, and if you're not used to it, uh, you're very at a very high risk for developing any of the heat-related illnesses that we're talking about. Another common risk factor is a high heat index. So the heat index is a single temperature value that considers how both the outdoor temperature and humidity make you feel. So when the humidity is high, your sweat can't evaporate as easily, and your body has more difficulty cooling itself off, which puts you at a higher risk for uh, heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now, uh, when the heat index is 91 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, you should definitely take precautions to keep cool. Um, if you're able to stay indoors during these um, high heat days, uh, it's, it's the best thing. But if you're unable to, make sure that you're uh, staying hydrated, make sure you take um, frequent breaks out of the sun if possible uh, to try to keep yourself from uh, becoming this higher risk factor. Now, again, some prevention tips for heat exhaustion. You can wear some loose-fitting or lightweight clothing. Uh, make sure it is the kind that will uh, help to absorb some of your sweat. Also, make sure you protect yourself against sunburn. Um, wearing those uh, SPF sunscreens, making sure you're covering your entire body that's exposed to the sun. Don't forget your neck and your ears. A lot of people forget that. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluid. Uh, water is very important. Um, again, there's a lot of different electrolyte replacement drinks that are out there now, all different flavors. There's something for everyone. Take extra precautions with certain medications, the ones that we discussed, um, and there are others. So it's important to talk to your doctor and see if any of those can put you at a higher risk for uh, heat-related illnesses. Also, never leave anyone in a parked car. Uh, we're going to go over a few um, details about this in a few slides, and it's, it's crazy to think the temperature inside of a car during the, the heat. Uh, try to take it easy during the hottest parts of the day. So between uh, 11 and 2 are the hottest parts of the day because the sun is at its peak right above us, and it's, it's hot. So if you're able to stay indoors during those times, that's the best thing you can do. If not, again, make sure you take the precautions, stay hydrated, um, give yourself some time to rest and cool off in the shade if possible. Also get acclimated. If you're not used to the heat, don't go outside and stay in the heat all day, every day. Let your body get used to it. Take short bouts um, being in the sun and the humidity until you do get acclimated to that. Otherwise, you will be at a higher risk for heat exhaustion or other heat-related illnesses. And then if you are at an increased risk, um, if you're in any of those categories we talked about on the previous slide, be cautious, be aware. Make sure you're doing all of the prevention tips um, if you're at any of those, in any of those um, higher risk categories. So now we're gonna move to heat Stroke. This is the most severe heat-related illness. Uh, heat stroke is a condition that is caused by your body overheating, usually as a result of prolonged exposure to or physical exertion in high temperatures. Uh, so again, the most serious form of heat injury, it can occur if your body temperature rises to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Um, the 104 degrees, the, the body temperature is usually measured by a rectal thermometer. Um, this is the most accurate way 
uh, to tell the temperature, the internal body temperature. Um, this condition is most common in the summer months because this is the hottest time of the year. Heat stroke requires emergency medical treatment, and if left untreated, it can quickly damage your brain, heart, kidneys, and muscles. And the damage will worsen the longer the treatment is delayed, which puts you at a higher risk of serious complications or even death. So you can see in the image here on the right, um, it looks like this guy was, was running, maybe doing a marathon, doing a race, and he may have passed out. Um, he had some type of heat-related injury, it looks like, and the medical personnel are all there. He is on a stretcher. This is a medical emergency, so this is not something to play with at all. The most common symptoms with heat stroke, again, high body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, which is obtained with the rectal thermometer. Um, this is the main sign of heat stroke. So this is gonna be the first thing that the medical personnel do is to check your core body temperature. Another symptom um, that is pretty common with heat stroke is an altered mental state or behavior. So some unusual confusion, agitation, some slurred speech, uh, irritability, delirium, seizures, and a coma can all result from heat stroke. Also, there may be some alteration in sweating. So in a heat stroke brought on by hot weather, your skin will feel hot and dry to the touch. But in a heat stroke brought on by strenuous exercise, your skin may feel dry or slightly moist. Also, you may feel some nausea or vomiting, um, one or both. You may also um, have flushed skin, so your, may, your skin may turn red as your body temperature increases. You could also have some rapid breathing. Your breathing could become rapid and very shallow, as well as your heart rate. It um, will probably significantly increase because heat stress puts a tremendous burden on your heart to help cool off your body. It's trying to cool off your body so um, the, your organs don't start to shut down. You also may experience a headache, so your head just may start to throb because, again, the internal, your core body temperature is so incredibly high and um, your body is trying to cool it off in any way possible. So heat stroke is a medical emergency. If you or you are with someone who may be experiencing a heat stroke, you want to call 911 immediately. You wanna take immediate action to cool the overheated person off while you wait for the emergency personnel. If you can safely get the person into um, an indoor area or into the shaded area, do so. Also, if you're able to remove any excessive clothing, um, do so as well. If they're able to have a conversation, if they're able to answer your questions, make sure you ask, um, tell them you're trying to help cool them off, ask if you can remove maybe their shoes, their socks, if they have a jacket, um, remove any excessive clothing um, if, they, if they agree. Uh, cool the person with whatever means you have available. If you are inside or near a home, put them in a cool tub of water or in a cool shower. You can spray them with a garden hose. Um, make sure you don't get the garden hose that's been in the sun all day because that water is going to be steaming hot, so let it cool off first. You can also um, get a sponge with cool water to dab on them to help cool them off. You can fan them while misting them with cool water. That'll help cool the body off. Or place some ice packs or cold, wet towels on the person's head, neck, armpits, and groin. Now, these are the areas that are going to help, help cool the body off um, the quickest. So, again, if, if you or someone you're with may be experiencing a heat stroke, these are the um, precautions, the, the immediate actions you can take while you're waiting on emergency personnel to arrive. There are some common causes that we see with heat stroke. Um, so the first one is exposure to a hot environment. So in a type of heat stroke called non-exertional or classic heat stroke, um, it's being in a hot environment, which leads to a rise in your core body temperature. Um, it usually occurs after exposure to hot humid weather, especially for long periods of time. It often occurs, uh, most often occurs in older adults, so those 65 and over, as well as those with chronic illnesses. So if you're in either of those categories, you are automatically at a higher risk for developing any of the heat-related illnesses that we discussed. 
Uh, the second um, cause of heat stroke could be from strenuous activity. Now, this is called exertional heat stroke. It's caused by an increase in your core body temperature brought on by intense physical activity in hot weather. So anyone that's exercising or working in hot weather can get exertional heat stroke, but it's most likely to occur if you're not used to the high temperatures, if your body is not acclimated to the high temperatures. Um, in either type of heat stroke, so the classic or non-exertional heat stroke or exertional, your condition can be brought on by wearing excessive clothing. So we talked about those um, layers that uh, prevent sweat from evaporating easily and cooling your body off. Also could be brought on by drinking alcohol, which can affect your body's ability to regulate the temperature. Also becoming dehydrated. So not drinking enough water to um, replace the fluids that you lose from sweating. So a lot of different causes and people that are at a higher risk. So it's, it's a pretty large group of people that could be affected by heat stroke. Again, the risk factors, your age. So the younger and the older, 65 and over are at a higher risk. Also, if you're doing any type of exertion in hot weather, whether that be physical activity, um, working, um, anything in the hot weather, if you're not replacing fluids, you're at a higher risk. Also, sudden exposure to hot weather, so those not acclimated, you're at a higher risk as well. If there's a lack of air conditioning and there's nowhere to help your body cool off, that's a risk factor as well. You have to have somewhere, some shaded cooler area to let your body cool off. Um, we also discussed some certain medications and health conditions that uh, put you at a higher risk for heat stroke and other heat-related illnesses as well. Now, there are some serious complications that can develop from heat stroke. Um, it just depends on how long the body temperature is at that elevated um, level, so 104 Fahrenheit or higher. Uh, some of the severe complications could include vital organ damage. So without a quick response to lower the body temperature, heat stroke can cause damage to your brain or other vital organs. Um, it could cause them to swell possibly resulting in permanent damage. Heat stroke can also cause death. Without prompt and adequate treatment, heat stroke can be fatal. This is the most serious, the most severe heat-related illness. Again, if you're at, um, in one of those high-risk categories, uh, being aware, trying to avoid, if possible, the being outside in the heat and humidity or doing any physical activity during those hottest parts of the day is so incredibly important. Now some prevention tips, um, we talked about the clothing, so wearing um, excess clothing or clothing that fits tightly will not allow your body to cool off. So try to wear loose fitting, lightweight clothing if you're going outdoors. Also protect yourself against sunburn. Uh, so if you can wear at least 15 SPF or higher, that's the suggested to hopefully avoid any sunburn. Sunburn actually affects your body's ability to cool itself. Also, um, if you can wear a wide-brimmed hat and sunglasses, that will help prevent sunburn as well. Now, if you're wearing a hat, um, if, if you do not have a hat that covers your ears or neck, don't forget the sunscreen. So many people forget those areas and end up um, getting sunburn and um, even some other sun cancers, sun-related cancers, skin cancers. Um, if you are going outdoors, you uh, want to make sure you apply the sunscreen generously to all the areas that are exposed to the sun and reapply every two hours or more often if you're swimming or sweating. So every two hours, if you're going swimming or if you're sweating a lot, um, reapply it uh, more often. So maybe every hour because when it wears off, when you're sweating or swimming and it um, comes off, you want to make sure as soon as you're done, you put it back on to avoid the sunburn. Also, make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, so stay hydrated. Um, it'll help your body uh, sweat and maintain a normal temperature. Uh, again, you have water. There's all of those different electrolyte replacement drinks, so lots of options to uh, make sure you're staying hydrated, putting in what you're losing from sweat. Take extra precautions if you're on certain medications like those diuretics, beta blockers, antipsychotics. A lot of different medications um, do put you at a higher risk. 
So be on the lookout for heat-related problems if you take medications that can affect your body's ability to stay hydrated. Also, never leave anyone in a parked car. We talked about this. So when a car is parked in the sun, the temperature can rise 20 degrees Fahrenheit in just 10 minutes. So your car is basically like an oven. And if you leave someone in there, it, it can practically cook them. I mean, 20 degrees in just 10 minutes, that is insane. So imagine leaving someone in a car for hours on hours and, and no way of them to be able to cool off. So never leave anyone, younger, older, um, anyone in a parked car. Also, take it easy during the hottest parts of the day. Uh, between 11 and 2, if you can avoid going outside, do so. If not, if you must be in the heat, uh, drink plenty of fluids, rest frequently in a cool shaded spot, if possible. Um, but if you can, try to schedule your exercise or physical activity um, during the cooler parts of the day, like the early morning or later in the evening. Another prevention tip is get acclimated. So limit your time spent working or exercising in the heat until your body is conditioned to it. Uh, we discuss people who are not used to the heat or the humidity are at a higher risk for any of these heat-related illnesses. And then the last one for the prevention tips is be cautious if you're at an increased risk. If you take those certain medications or if you have a chronic illness, that increases your risk of heat-related problems. So try to avoid the heat and act quickly if you notice any of the symptoms of overheating. So just some prevention tips, and this, this pretty much goes for all three heat-related illnesses that we talked about, some things that you can do to hopefully prevent them from happening to you. So heat stroke, um, it is usually diagnosed by uh, checking your core body temperature, that rectal temperature that we discussed a few slides ago. Um, it's the most accurate way of determining what your core body temperature is, and it's uh, more accurate than the mouth or forehead temperatures. So this is usually the first go-to to see if that's the diagnosis someone has. Um, but there are other, some, some other tests that can confirm the diagnosis and rule out other causes. Uh, for your symptoms, as well as assess for any organ damage, because we know heat stroke can be fatal. So they um, may want to do a blood test to check your blood sodium or potassium levels to check your electrolytes, as well as the content of gases in your blood to see if there's been any damage to your central nervous system. Uh, there may also be a urine test done to check the color of your urine, because it's usually darker, um, darker yellow or an amber color, if you have a heat-related condition, uh, they may also want to check your kidney function to see if your kidneys have been affected uh, by the heat-related illness. Another test that they may do is a um, muscle function test to check for any serious damage to your muscle tissues. Uh, another is either x-rays or other imaging tests, maybe CAT scans or MRIs, just to check for any uh, possible damage to your internal organs because like we said um, earlier, the longer that you wait for treatment, the more damage is possible to your internal organs. So very important if this is a possibility, if you or someone you're with may be experiencing a heat stroke, um, to seek medical attention immediately. So some of the treatment options that um, the hospital, ER, urgent care, wherever you're going, if you're with someone or if you may be experiencing a heat stroke, these are some of the treatment options that they may do. Um, so the treatment centers on cooling your body to a normal temperature to prevent or reduce damage to your brain and other organs. So again, some things that they may do, depending on the facility that you go to, they may or may not have all of these um, options. So the first one you can see here is they may immerse you in cold water. A bath of cold or ice water has been proven to be the most effective way of quickly lowering your core body temperature. So the quicker you can get to the cold water immersion, the less risk of death and organ damage. The second technique would be use evaporation cooling techniques. So if the cold water immersion is not available, uh, the uh, medical team may try to lower your body temperature using the evaporation method. 
That's where they mist cool water onto your body while they um, fan you with warm air, which causes uh, the water to evaporate and cool your skin off, which then in turn helps to cool your internal body temperature. Another treatment option would be to pack you with ice and cooling blankets. So they wrap you in these special cooling blankets um, and can apply ice packs to your groin, neck, back, and armpits to uh, lower your core body temperature. And another treatment option that they may do, uh, this could be uh, in conjunction with the above three, they could give you medications to stop your body from shivering. So if treatments to lower your body temperature make you shiver, which I'm sure if you were um, put in a bathtub full of ice water, you would shiver, uh, your doctor may give you a muscle relaxant such as a benzodiazepine because shivering increases your body temperature, making the treatment less effective. So if they use um, any of the first three treatment options, the uh, muscle relaxant may be given as well uh, to, to help your body from shivering, to stop your body from shivering, so they can bring that high core body temperature down to the safe level, um, again, to prevent or reduce damage to your brain and other organs. So you can see these are, these are very serious um, and very rapid treatment options that they will do because cooling your body um, to that normal temperature is, um, is the option for heat stroke. That's the only option, is to get your body temperature back down. Now, this is a um, nice little diagram that we found. Um, this may be something, if you want to go ahead and do a quick screenshot um, of this screen. This talks about all three of the heat-related illnesses that we've discussed. It's got heat stroke at the top, heat exhaustion in the middle, and heat cramps at the bottom. Now, the column on the left, the yellow, these are the signs and symptoms. And then the column on the right in the orange, this is the treatment option that you should do. So if you're experiencing or you're with someone that's experiencing any of these symptoms on the yellow, you can see the things on the right or what you can do to help them with the treatment. Again, if you or someone you're with uh, are possibly experiencing a heat stroke, the number one thing is to call 911 because you need to get the medical personnel on their way so they can help to um, start cooling that person's temperature down. So if you want to, I'll give you a few more seconds, if you want to do a screenshot and then copy and paste it onto a, a Word or a, a notepad, uh, then you can print it out, keep it somewhere where it's readily accessible because we um, do have some, some hot weather. Uh, pretty much year round, so there you go. All right. Now, in review, just to go over everything that we've discussed throughout this seminar, so if you notice any signs of heat-related illnesses, lower your body temperature and prevent your condition from progressing to a heat stroke. Um, in a lesser heat emergency, like heat cramps or heat exhaustion, um, these are the steps that you can take to lower your body temperature. So one, get to a shady or air-conditioned location. Number two, cool off with damp sheets um, or some type of cooling agent and a fan. Number three, take a cool shower or bath. Number four is rehydrate, drink plenty of fluids. And number five, don't drink sugary or alcoholic beverages to rehydrate. Um, these actually could interfere with your body's ability to control your temperature. Also, as a side note, try not to drink iced cold drinks when you're rehydrating. That can actually cause you to have some stomach cramps. So you can drink some cool fluids um, or room temperature fluids. That's going to be the best bet uh, to avoid any stomach pains or cramps. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation uh, and I hope you've got some good tips to avoid any of the heat-related illnesses that we discussed. If you have any questions, uh, we do ask that you contact the Villages Health Learning Center. We'll be happy to answer any of those questions that you have and I hope to um, have you join in some future seminars. Thank you so much. Have a great day.